welcome to Tuesday's Tales. Today our story is called The Story of Ferdinand by Munro Leaf. And I'm excited about this one. This is a this is one of those classic books that never go away. They just keep getting better and better. So let's start. The Story of Ferdinand by Munro Leaf. Illustrated by Robert Lawson. Once upon a time in Spain, there was a little bull, and his name was Ferdinand. Oh. All the other little bulls he lived with would run and jump and butt their heads together. But not Ferdinand. He liked to sit just quietly and smell the flowers. Oh, bless. He had a favorite spot out in the pasture under a cork tree. It was his favorite tree and he would sit in its shade all day and smell the flowers. Sometimes his mother, who was a cow, would worry about him. She was afraid he would be lonesome all by himself. Why don't you run and play with the other little bulls and skip and butt your head, she would say. But Ferdinand would shake his head. I like it better here, where I can just sit quietly and smell the flowers. It's like... No thanks, Mom. <laughs> His mother saw that he was not lonesome, and because she was an understanding mother, even though she was a cow, she let him just sit there and be happy. As the years went by, Ferdinand grew and grew, until he was very big and strong. All the other bulls who had grown up with him in the same pasture would fight each other all day. They would butt each other and stick each other with their horns. What they wanted much most of all was to be picked to fight at the bull fights in Madrid. But not Ferdinand. He still liked to sit just quietly under the cork tree and smell the flowers. One day, five men came in very funny hats to pick the biggest, fastest, roughest bull to fight in the bullfights in Madrid. All the other bulls ran around snorting and butting and leaping and jumping so the men would think that they were very, very strong and fierce and pick them. Ferdinand knew that they wouldn't pick him and he didn't care. So he went out to his favorite cork tree to sit down. He didn't look where he was sitting, and instead of sitting on the nice cool grass in the shade, he sat on a bumblebee. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Well, if you were a bumblebee and a bull sat on you, what would you do? You would sting him. And that's just what this bee did to Ferdinand. <laughs> oh no. Wow, did it hurt. <laughs> Ferdinand jumped up with a snort. He ran around puffing and snorting, butting and pawing the ground as if he were crazy. The five men saw him and they all shouted with joy. Here was the largest and fiercest bull of them all, just the one for the bullfights in Madrid. So they took him away for the bullfight day in a cart. Oh. What a day it was. Flags were flying, bands were playing. And all the lovely ladies had flowers in their hair.
they had a parade into the bull ring. Ooh, with a fancy horse. First came the Banderillos with their long, sharp pins with ribbons on them to stick in the bull and make him mad. <laughs> Next came the picadores, who rode skinny horses, and they had long spears to stick into the bull and make him madder. <laughs> then came the matador, the proudest of all. He thought he was very handsome and bowed to the ladies. He had a red cape and a sword and was supposed to stick the bull last of all. Oh my, look at, look at Mr. Fancy. Then came the bull, and you know who that was, don't you? Ferdinand. Oh, he looks very small right there. Oh. They called him Ferdinand the Fierce, and all the banderillas were afraid of him, and the picadores were afraid of him, and the matador was scared stiff. Oh, no. Ferdinand ran to the middle of the ring and everyone shouted and clapped because they thought he was going to fight fiercely and butt and snort and stick his horns around. But not Ferdinand. When he got to the middle of the ring, he saw the flowers and all the lovely ladies' hair, and he just sat down quietly and smelled. <laughs> He wouldn't fight and be fierce, no matter what they did. He just sat and smelled. And the banderillos... Banderilleros. That's probably the correct way. I don't know much Spanish. Banderilleros were mad. And the picadores were madder. And the matador was so mad he cried because he couldn't show off with his cape and sword. Aw, oh, man. So they had to take Ferdinand home. And for all I know, he's sitting there still, under his favorite cork tree, smelling the flowers just quietly. He is very happy. The end. Oh, that's a nice story. All right, so our Bible story for today is right here. So let's get started. God's people had a new land. Now they needed a king. But God is your king, Samuel told them. He is the one who looks after you best. We want a real king, they said, one we can see. God knew that a king might not be kind to his people or look after them as well as he would, but God's people didn't care. They wanted a king and they wanted him now. So God gave them a king. He was called Saul and he seemed like a good king at first, but he became proud and stopped listening to God. He didn't obey God or love God with his whole heart. Saul can't help me with my plan, God said. I need a king who loves me and will teach my people to love me. I need a true king. God had just the one in mind. Go to Bethlehem, God told Samuel. You'll find the new king there. Samuel's job was to listen to God and tell people what God said. That's called being a prophet. Yes. Just in case you don't sure. So Samuel went to the little town of Bethlehem. God told Samuel to go to Jesse's house. God was going to choose one of Jesse's sons to be the new king. Jesse had seven strong sons. Now in those days, if you were going to be the king, you didn't have to be the richest or the cleverest, although that was always nice. You had to look like a king, which meant you had to be the tallest and the strongest, so you could carry the longest swords and the biggest armor and defeat everyone. And it didn't hurt to be handsome either. 
Samuel asked Jesse to bring him each son in turn. So Jesse brought the oldest, tallest, strongest son. This must be the new king, Samuel thought. He looks like a king. But God didn't choose him. You're thinking about what he looks like on the outside, God told Samuel. But I'm looking at his heart, what he's like on the inside. So Jesse showed Samuel his next oldest, tallest, strongest son. But God didn't choose him either. In fact, God didn't choose any of the seven sons. Samuel said, Is that all? Jesse laughed. Oh, well, there's the youngest one, but he's just the weakling of the family. He's only teeny. Bring him, asked Samuel. Jesse's youngest son came running up, and God spoke quietly to Samuel. This is the one. His name was David. He has a heart like mine, God said. It is full of love. He will help me with my secret rescue plan. And one day his children's children's children will be the king. And the king will rule the world forever. Samuel anointed David's head with oil, which was a special way to show that you are God's chosen king. You will be the new king one day, Samuel told him. And sure enough, when he grew up, David became king. God chose David to be king because God was getting his people ready for an even greater king who was coming for them. Once again, God would say, go to Bethlehem, go find the new king there. And there, one starry night in Bethlehem, the little town of Bethlehem, in the town of David, three wise men would find him. The end. Well, thanks for joining us today and hope to see you again soon. Bye.